So now we're going to go to a creature that, that certainly qualifies as mysterious or secretive. Uh, you don't see these around very often. We actually have two species of flying squirrel in Maine now. We have the northern, which is the native species. But because of climate change, the southern flying squirrel is starting to move into southern parts of Maine now. And I'll show you a little bit of the difference between the two. This is a northern on the side. Notice the tawny color here, the darker color underneath the, the, the skin flaps there, where the southern is very light colored there. Notice the darker eyes, darker head, uh, the tail, and there's a difference in size. The northern flying squirrel is going to be about six to eight inches. The southern flying squirrel is going to be two inches shorter than that on average. Now, if you happen to see one whiz by you in the forest, that's, again, going to be hard to determine. But up in this part of the country, my guess is all you're going to see is the northern flying squirrels. I love this photograph. Again, I didn't take this. I wish I had. Somebody had very specialized photography skills here to get this creature in flight. And uh, I like it that he's carrying his lunch provisions with him as he goes. Of course, these squirrels don't fly. They glide. And they glide like these idiots we've seen jumping off mountains up in the, the Alps and in the Rockies with their, with their flight suits on. They trap air underneath these flaps of skin here that are a little bit like, a, it looks like a, a beaver pelt all stretched out. And they can glide as much as 300 feet, depending on the height of the tree where they launch themselves and whether there's any wind helping them. They can glide a heck of a long way. They can actually carve a turn as well. So if they decide they want to move to a tree over here, they can carve around another tree pretty skillful uh, flight. Uh, I've encountered these guys a number of times uh, in bird boxes. Uh, I don't know if any of you keep screech owl boxes, for instance, but when I clean those boxes in the winter or uh, late winter, early spring, it's not unusual at our place in New York that I find some of them huddled together. Uh, they tend to cluster two, three, four of them for warmth in the winter to get through the, the long period of time. But they need a cavity, they need a hole, and they're not capable of digging a cavity like that. They rely on guys like this, the, uh, the phylated woodpecker or, or the smaller woodpeckers to start a hole for them. Uh, as I mentioned, the bird boxes. This is a picture a friend of mine took at his place in Thompson. Uh, he was, of course, interested in having bluebirds in the box, but the flying squirrels had other ideas and, and moved in on it. Uh, but it's fun to have neighbors like that if you can get them around. Now, unfortunately, they're also adept at getting in your house. And like bats, if you've got a crack somewhere in the, the, the overhang of the house or in a wall or whatever, and they get in, it can be very difficult to get rid of them. You'd have to get a professional in there to remove them from your house. You can imagine them scrabbling around at night in the walls, uh, keeping you awake. 